Hi, this is Matt at AppWorks, and this is going to be a little bit slower video to take a more careful look at our five-minute video that we released on connecting FileMaker to Slack using Claris Connect, um, taking a look at some of the things that you need to do in FileMaker to make this work. So we'll use the same demo that we used in the first video and talk a little bit more about what you need. So with FileMaker Server, you turn on the web publishing engine and the data API. Um, so those screens look like this, the data API, is just make sure it's on. When you get FileMaker Server, you get a whole bunch of data that comes with your account. That'll vary based on your type of license. And uh, this uses very little data to communicate uh, generally, so you're probably going to stay within your limits. The second thing that you need is in FileMaker, you have to have an account set up. Let's take a look at those accounts because we're in FileMaker in this database right here. So if you go to Manage Security, I have my normal developer account right here that I use, and then another account just for just for Claris Connect called Demo. Uh, I would recommend you use a better name than Demo, and I'd recommend you use a really strong password. And more than anything, I recommend that you use a dedicated privilege set. So you do not, do not use one of the um, standard privilege sets that come with FileMaker, like data entry or read-only, uh, but instead start with a new one that you can call whatever you like to call. I called mine Claris Connect. And that one should be limited so that it only has access to just what you need. So like in this database, I have two, uh, two tables that I want to connect to, test and response. And also I have a log that I use. And I only turn on access to those. Then check the box only for FileMaker Data API. This prevents users from using this account to log on, for example, with the FileMaker client on a Mac or a PC or an iPad. OK, after you've got those things set up, the next step to do is change, don't save any of my changes, is to um, go into the Claris Connect configuration. So that's here inside of Claris Connect. That's actually Slack right there. And then I'm going to start a new flow. So we'll go take this a little bit more slowly. I'll create a new flow, call it FM to Slack. And I have already some accounts set up. Um, so in my uh, settings for Claris Connect, I've got FileMaker and Slack already configured. And that's really simple to do. Basically, you just type in the, uh, the, name, the address of your server and the uh, username and password of that account that we were just talking about. So in FileMaker, I'm going to set up a new trigger. And I'm going to use the account that I set up. And then you get to this screen. And this has all these steps. This confused me a little bit at first um, because of the things that you have to do. But it really comes down to just two lines of code in a script. And then this information here, which we're going to copy to the clipboard. So in my script in FileMaker, I have just the two lines of code we talked about, one of which is um, the insert from URL. That's where we paste that URL that I was just talking about. So we click on Specify put it in quotes. The other area is um, that we paste into the script is if we click on curl options, we just copy and paste those. Those are the same in all instances of this. And it's using, it actually passes to curl the string called dollar dollar JSON data. So we have to actually set up dollar dollar JSON data in this script, which is the other important line of code. And in that case, this is code that I did not copy and paste, but code that I, I wrote. And I'm using the JSON set element. And the key thing that it must have is it must have action and script. So you kind of need this code looking just like this. And then anything else in this script that you pass is going to be sent to FileMaker, um, which is pretty cool. So for example, if I add another line to this and say, I also want to send um, something like the creation timestamp, um, I'll set up a new line of code in here called uh, create, or created maybe. And then the data that I'm going to send is the creation timestamp. And the type of data in JSON is JSON string. OK. Um, one of the cool things about JSON is in FileMaker is if you could type it in lowercase and click OK, if you've done it correctly, when you go back into it, it will correct the case. Um, OK, so once that's done, with just those two lines of code, I'm going to go ahead and save that script. 
and then um, in FileMaker, this is the two steps we just talked about. Uh, in FileMaker, I'm going to save this. Now, what the first time you actually do this, um, the first time you configure it if you, when you connect to your server, it's going to make you actually run your trigger before it will save that. So you actually have to click your button, um, which is then going to give you a response. So if we run this in debugger, um, we can actually see kind of what's going on um, with our script. Here's script debugger. So it sets my JSON data and an insert from URL. And then I'm looking for an error message. So in my code, I actually have an extra line because I really want to see exactly what's going on with my data. So here's the JSON. Here's the actual data that's sent to FileMaker. Sorry, to Claris Connect. Okay, once my code runs, um, if my script is active, which it's not, I'd actually be able to look at history and see exactly what's happening with it. So uh, the next step here is I'm going to connect this to Slack. So I'll say new action and in Slack, post a message. Choose the Slack account that I've already configured. And if I want to connect a new account, this is what that win uh, window looks like, by the way. You just basically kind of go in and, uh, and uh, authenticate it to do what it needs to do. The channel is going to be Claris Connect. And then the message can be any data that it gets from FileMaker. So check this out. When I click on FileMaker, it's going to now know from the body of the JSON code that I sent to FileMaker, the action, which is just, that's that required thing that must have, and then also the data, which is whatever I type in that field in FileMaker, and the creation timestamp. So I'm actually going to be able to get two pieces of data if I want that. So I can put the data in here, and then um, like some, some text created, and the timestamp data. I can do a couple of other things too. I can put in a URL, so if I want the icon that posts to Slack to be something different, I can click the button to add um, attachments, which is pretty cool. Um, and the other thing I can do is, in Claris Connect, I can actually set um, in points here. I can add another action in the middle, and I can use uh, one of the tools that we have here, like for example, the text utility. to just have some, some standard text in there, like lowercase or title case. Um, I can also use a utility um, for a variable. So Claris Connect has a, a feature very much like what FileMaker has to just instantiate a variable. So that's just variable. And this can get data from FileMaker and then act on it. So for example, I can say, um, in my variable, I can give it a name like um, created. And then click plus, created. Actually, I want my variable name to just be create a new variable, created. And then the variable value will be data from FileMaker, my creation timestamp. So I can set that as a variable and use that in many places instead of just going direct. Uh, so that's pretty convenient. Um, and then when I post a message, when I'm getting my data, uh, rather than just using data directly from FileMaker, um, I, I can actually see my variable data as well. And there's that data right there. OK, once that's done, I enable my flow by turning it on. And here's another really feature, another feature that I really love. If I run my code right now, I'll say this is a test. Version 2. And click Publish, Post to Slack. Okay, so now if I open up my Slack, I see that message is right there. And it also contains the time step information, which is great. What I love is that if I'm trying to troubleshoot what's going on with this, I can go to History and this is not going to be on by default, but when you turn on history, which is just one checkbox, you can click on each of the, the line items in your flow and see exactly what happened with that line. 
I have to confess, I wish I had this feature in FileMaker when running a script to be able to get this kind of information after the fact. But Claris Connect has a built-in, and it gives me tons of ability to find out exactly what happened and when it happened in my actual data calls. And it keeps this data in the log for 30 days. So really great feature. And now this flow will just continue to run in the background. And anytime anybody goes to this database and clicks a button or runs a script or does a script trigger or whatever, any way that I want to grab it, it's going to post that data from this field into Slack. Pretty great. Thanks very much for your time.